Hey guys, welcome back to Retro Peace Theater. So, in the last episode, we uh, basically did everything that we needed to do in the dungeon, and now we're getting ready to go to the boss. But it couldn't be that easy, could it? So, as you see, we've got these rooms, so we're actually going to push these, and it's going to shift this whole cylinder around. And it's going to open up different rooms, it's going to close off others, as you can see. So we're going to go in here, and we're going to hit this switch. And... I'm actually going to push this back. I'm trying to remember the exact pattern, so you may have to bear with me for a moment while I get this worked out. Well, that wasn't the room that was unlocked, neither was that. Okay. So... Push this one more time. And that lets us into this room. And just for posterity, let's push it one more time. We are going to need some arrows. Um, and mostly because that sound is annoying. And we'll push this around again. can go, and we're going to take on the boss of the Forest Temple. And just when you think nobody's here, and you go to try to leave... Paper-thin spears jut up in front of you. Can it be? Ganon already? Well, this is it, folks. That's the end of the... Oh, wait. No. No. Phantom Ganon. Now, if I remember right, there is a trick to this part. See, he's going to jump into these paintings. And he's going to try to come out of one of these two paintings. I think it's going to be this one. And I'll know in a moment. Yep. So he's going to ride away. And... It's going to be this one. He will appear lighter in color in the one that he's actually going to come out of. Like I said in the last episode, um, there's always some kind of tell. This is one of the more subtle ones. He's gonna come out of this one. Because what happens is the other one just turns around and runs away. And there he is. Okay, now for this battle, he's gonna do that, and we're gonna knock it back at him. My timing's a little off, let's see here. Now, something I read not long ago is that you can actually use a bottle to knock it back, which I think is hilarious. Yep. That's funny. Get into a volleyball match here. Or tennis, rather. And... Get some jump slashes in.
And since we're a long way away from it, really, um, and you may forget before we get there, this is a little reminiscent of the battle, the actual battle with Ganondorf at the end of the game. Hmm. Less than five minutes, not bad. This also gives you an idea of just the level of power Ganon has managed to acquire in the last seven years. That he's capable of banishing things to the gap between dimensions. Um, that's way more powerful than we see him at any other point so far. And we're going to have a bit of a cutscene here. We're back at the Chamber of Sages. This is where we met Raru uh, uh, two episodes ago. And there's a friendly face. And Saria, our old friend from Kokiri Forest, is the Sage of the Forest. And Sheik told us that it was somebody that we should know. And Surya looks the same because, well, the Kokiri don't age and grow up the way everyone else does. And now she gives you the next medallion. Now we're back outside the Great Deku Tree. That scene never gets old. Such happy music. And this is the new Deku Tree. flashback a Hylian mother and her baby boy entered the forest and this is part of the theory that in this game in this canon Link and Zelda are actually long-lost siblings and that the gravely injured mother was the queen because of the war. Now, it's never actually said that, but that's one of the prevailing theories. <clears throat> okay. And now Kokiri Forest looks a little better than the last time we saw it. Last time we saw it, it was overrun with monsters. Uh, your home is actually still over there. And 
there's a Pona right where I left her. So we're actually going to go back to the Temple of Time at the moment. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Come on, get on there. So we are actually able to go back and forth through time because there's going to be different points where we need to uh, become Child Link again and then Adult Link. Now when we get here, the castle and the market are still going to be pretty gloomy. There's a really good shot of Death Mountain, once again. So now we're going to uh, get another song that Sheik is going to give us here. And we're not actually going to go back in time at this moment, but... Um, these warp songs are really pretty wonderful. Um, and this one will take us back here to the Temple of Time. Sorry, I had to adjust my headset there. I think some of that audio came through. Okay. Now for the next dungeon, uh, we need to head to go see some old friends in the mountains. And once again, right now, daytime, nighttime doesn't really matter um, for whatever I'm going.
And before we can do the fire dungeon, there's something that we need. And that's basically where I'm going straight to get. We do need to go see the Gorons. Um, and Goron Village is a little different um, now because, you know, time has passed and things have gotten harder on everybody. And, you know, now I've got to dodge giant rolling things on my way down. No, on my way up, rather. Like that. And actually right now I need my bombs. Okay, now if you remember a few episodes ago, we had a uh, giant rolling Goron, and this is one of the only Gorons here that we need to stop. He's one of the only Gorons in all of Goron City, but we have to stop him with a bomb just like the big one. I like that he has your name. Okay. So his dad was Darunia, the leader of the Gorons, uh, that made you his sworn brother and gave you the Gorons Ruby in that last in that episode of episode four, I think. I like that he has free autograph. But he's going to give us something that's really, really useful. We're asking him. So, in the Fire Temple, there was a great evil dragon, Volvagia. Um, and uh, Darunia has gone to try to stop Volvagia at the Fire Temple. We're going to ask him about the Gorons. And you learn that the reason Goron City is empty is because everybody was taken there. And uh, as food for the Great Dragon. And now we get the heat resistant tunic. Now, there's another way to get this. You can actually just go to the Goron shop and buy it. Um, I do believe. But. Um, ultimately, you know, we have it. So now we're going to go into Darunia's quarters back here. And we're going to pull this back. First, we should equip said heat-resistant tunic. And pull this back. And now, we are inside of the volcano that is Death Mountain Crater. Now, I'm actually going to go this way. I think I can blow these up, but I'm not sure. No. Okay, so there's a weapon you get in the Fire Temple called the Megaton Hammer, and it lets you break up things that even bombs wouldn't be able to break. And if I didn't have my heat-resistant tunic on and I went in here, I would be in a lot of trouble. It gives you a timer, and then basically you burn up and you're dead. So, good times. And there's our wonderful friend, Sheik, again. Who can apparently go anywhere without it being a problem. And 
this is one of my favorite songs in the game. Probably my second favorite overall. It's my favorite of the songs that you learn for the purposes of what you're doing. For, of the warp songs, rather. There's another song you're going to learn later that's really, really cool. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm doing too many things at once <laughs> while all this is going on. So there's another song that you hear later on that's really, really cool. But this is the coolest of the songs that you learn. I apologize. My attention was split for a moment. Just like that, Sheik is gone. Okay, and that's our warp song. So, and it would warp us right to this point. So, actually, I'm going to end this episode early because some of the others have gone a little long, but I don't want to uh, really get into the fire temple without uh, being able to get you know significantly far in the episode. So. We'll get right inside here, save, and uh, call that an episode. So thanks, guys. Uh, Fire Temple's next. Thanks.